Today, I want to talk about evaluating the trauma patient. This evaluation falls under the following headings. The primary survey, adjuncts, resuscitation, re-evaluation, the secondary survey, adjuncts, re-evaluation, and definitive care. Even though I have itemized the steps for the purpose of this presentation, usually the primary survey, adjuncts to the primary survey, and resuscitation are performed simultaneously through a team approach. The primary survey. We talk about A, B, C, D, and E. A involves airway with C-spine protection. B involves breathing and adequate oxygenation. C involves circulation with hemorrhage control. D is disability and E involves exposure and environment. I will talk about each component of the primary survey. Let me start with the airway. Make sure the airway is patent. If it is not, then establish a patent airway. This might require intubation. At the same time, protect the C-spine, especially if the patient came in with a collar if the patient came in without a collar and C-spine injury is suspected, then put on a collar. Be aware of occult airway injury or progressive loss of the airway and equipment failure. The next step is breathing. If the airway is patent, then the next step Thing to ensure is that the patient is breathing. This is achieved by looking at the rising of the chest wall. Chest movement is due to air entry. Once ventilation is confirmed, then look at the respiratory rate and the oxygen saturation. Be aware of hydrogenic pneumothorax, which may occur during the delivery of care and the tension pneumothorax, which may be missed on presentation. The next thing to consider is circulation. So far, I have confirmed the patient's airway is patent, the C spine is protected, there is adequate ventilation with appropriate rate, and now I want to determine if there is good circulation. For this, I am checking his level of consciousness. I am also checking his skin color and temperature and his pulse rate. If there is bleeding, hemorrhage should be controlled and volume restored by giving fluid or blood. I am also reassessing the patient after each step to make sure that his condition has not changed for the worse. The next step is disability. So let's review. I have assessed his airway and C-spine. I have assessed his breathing and his circulation. And now I am going to assess his neurologic status. This falls on the disability. I will begin with a baseline neurologic exam. I will use the Glasgow Coma Scale score and the pupillary response to establish my baseline. The Glasgow Coma Scale is the most common scoring system used to describe the level of consciousness in a person following a traumatic brain injury. Basically, it is used to help gauge the severity of an acute brain attack. It measures the following functions. Eye opening. If the person opens 
the I spontaneously, that's equivalent to four points. If the person opens the eye to sound, that's three points. If the person opens the eye to pressure, that's two points. And if the person cannot open their eye, that's one point. And of course, the, the non-testable is if the person is dead. The next thing is the verbal response. There's five points if the person is oriented. There's four points if the person is confused. There are three points if the person's word can speak words, but it's not coherent. There are two points if the person makes sounds, but no words. And there's one point if there's no utterance whatsoever. Then there's the motor response. There are six points if the person obeys command. There are five points if the person is able to localize um, instructions with the extremity. There, there are four points if there is normal um, flexion there are three points if there is abnormal flexion, which is known as decorticate posturing. There are two points if there is extension, and this is, ref this is abnormal extension now with the palms up and everted, and this is known as decerebrate posturing. And there's one point if there is no, no, no motor response. Every brain injury is different, but generally brain injury is classified as severe with a Glossococoma scale of eight or less, moderate with a Glossococoma scale score of nine to 12, and the mild if the Glossococoma scale score is between 13 and 15. The last step in the primary survey is exposure and environment. In this step, the patient is completely undressed. Here is where I search for injuries. Please keep in mind that the primary survey is happening simultaneously through teamwork. Once the A, B, C, D, E of the primary survey has been assessed, I will introduce some primary survey adjuncts, namely obtain an EKG, obtain an ABG, repeat the vitals, up and obtain the pulse oximeter and the CO2 level. Place a urinary catheter and NG tube in the patient if no contraindications are present. And I will also obtain diagnostic imaging and perform a fast. Now that I have completed the primary survey and I have assessed the A, B, C, D, and E, and I'm satisfied that his vital functions are returning to normal, I will now focus on the secondary survey. The components of the secondary survey include the history, the physical exam from head to toe, the complete neurologic examination, special diagnostic test, and re-evaluation. Let me focus on the history. The history could be put in the acronym AMPLE, A-M-P-L-E. The history should include allergies. The allergies, it is important to know if the person has any allergies at this point. Then medications. If it's possible any at all, we should know if the person is on any medications. Past medical illnesses. That is important to know if it is attainable. The last meal. And this is particularly important if the person has to go to the OR and if aspiration um, is a matter of concern. 
and then the events and environment and mechanism. This takes in what happened, where it happened, and how it happened. The, the events and environment and mechanism is very important, especially the mechanism. The mechanism of injury is very important. The physical exam is the next aspect of the secondary survey. Examine the head, palpate the scalp. Examine the brain by using the Glossococoma scale score. Examine the eye, including visual acuity. Examine the air canal, look for blood. Examine the facial bones, look for deformity and palpate the bones. Examine the neck, Look for swelling or laceration. Auscultate for stridor and bruise. Examine the chest. Inspect, palpate, percuss, and auscultate. Examine the abdomen. Inspect, auscultate, palpate, and percuss. Examine the perineum. Look for contusion, hematoma, laceration, and urethral blood. Examine the rectum. Evaluate the spinster tone. Check for high riding prostate. Check the rectal wall and look for blood. Examine the vagina. Look for blood and laceration. Examine the pelvis. Look for tenderness, on palpation, instability, and uneven leg length. Try to avoid excessive pelvic manipulation and be careful not to underestimate pelvic blood loss. Examine the extremities. Look for contusion and deformity. Palpate for tenderness. Evaluate for perfusion, blood loss, and neurovascular status. Be aware of compartment syndrome. Examine the spine. Check for tenderness and the swelling. Assess motor, sensory, and reflexes. Be aware of persons who cannot cooperate with the exam. The patient should be reassessed. How do I minimize missed injuries? The best ways to minimize missed injuries are, number one, maintain a high index of suspicion. Number two, Perform a, con a conscientious primary and secondary survey. And number three, do frequent re-evaluation and monitoring of the patient. Transferring the patient. Which patient do I transfer to a higher level of care? Those patients whose injuries exceed institutional capabilities should be transferred. When should the transfer occur. The transfer should occur as soon as possible after stabilizing the patient. Airway and ventilation should be controlled and hemorrhage should be controlled. Mastering caring for the trauma patient is an art and skill that comes with practice, determination, and commitment. Well, thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I wish you well. Good night.